Hey guys, it's Ken Arnold for Apple Teenies the Podcast. Thanks for coming back for episode two of the Kathy Searle interview. Oh hey, this is Kathy Searle, and guess what? You're listening to Apple Teenies with Ken Arnold and Dan Franco. Apple Teenies with Ken. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh yeah. Apple Teenies with Ken. Ah, oh, oh, oh. Apple teenies with Ken, oh yeah, oh whoa, 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 whoa. Apple teenies with Ken, Apple teenies with Ken, oh yeah. Yes, I mean that's good stuff. I mean it's great stuff. So uh, one of your pupils, somebody who yeah, studied yes. under you, I know Dan was thinking about yeah. it, and I'm thinking about it too. Um, Amy Roush. Uh, so course. proud of her. She was on Better Call Saul. Terrible. What do you think about that? I know How do she you was. feel that somebody that you worked with, taught, and, and mentored, you know, yeah. how do you feel about that? I'm coaching her. It's I amazing. Know. It's She's, first of all, she's phenomenal. She doesn't really need me, I you know? But it's, she's an incredibly talented actress. I think we need each other to bounce ideas off of. And, you know, you watch somebody and you go, oh, I'm going to give you this suggestion. And it just tweaks it. And all of a sudden it's like, you know, she's off to the races. But I'm so incredibly proud of her. I have loved watching every audition she has put on tape. I think that she is knocking it out of the park. It's another example of, oh, why didn't you get it? Well, they went older or they went with a different look or... It's, you know, she's doing great work. And that's what we should feel good about is like, that's the win. You got the audition. Did you do great work? Great. That's two two wins. And you just go, okay, something's coming. And with Better Call Saul, it was like, oh, yeah, this is a reminder that you're A-OK. Yes. Like, you're going to be fine. You are you're on, fine. you know, an incredibly successful show and, and you yeah. deserve to be there. You deserve to be there. Yeah, and she- so I'm just so... So she was so worried when she went out to New Mexico and she was going to be out there for a while. And I was like, listen, it, you're in the right spot. Big fish, yes, tiny ponds. Exactly. You're in the right spot and good things are going to happen for yeah. you. Yeah. And, you know, look at this. Here she is. Right. Yeah. She did. She yeah. did great. I'm so proud of her myself. It's really cool. Yeah. It's really cool. I know. So. I know. I know. I love the Actors Club. There's a lot of talent there. And it's just it's a matter of time for everyone. It's, you know, that's the funny thing. It's like. You just don't know when your number is going to be pulled. It's like, just keep in the game. Stay in the game. Yeah. Stay in the game. Keep going. Stay sharp. You know, stay in it. Yeah. And, and just. Yeah. And live your life and live. Boom. Outside. Yep. So. Yeah. Um, I know. I want, I want to throw one in here, Ken. Um, All right. Go ahead. So you have done a lot of, I think the first thing I, before I even knew you, I knew your commercials. I knew you from commercials. Um, but this past year, you you landed like the big fish of commercials. You got the Super Bowl commercial. I did. I did. <laughs> I had a, a State Farm commercial with Paul Rudd and Drake. Um, right. Yeah. I mean, it was amazing. You know, it's Paul Rudd is exactly what you want him to be. He is charming, funny, lovely, kind to everyone. Um, I mean, everyone. I watched him on set and I was like, that's how to do it. Um, just nice to everybody. It didn't matter who you were. If you were a background player, if you were, you know, set designer, he said hi to you. And it was awesome. just, yes, he treated everybody with the the same amount of respect. And I am such a fan of that. Um, and then Drake with like his entourage of people, you know, it's weird. I've never worked with like someone of that echelon. And you did feel like this presence, like float in. And I was just like, <laughs> there he is. Ooh, wow. Drake. Uh, and it was, you know, it was cool. I was sort of like, cool, cool, what's up? Like, and I said hi to him, but, you know, there I am, like, with a mask. And so you're just kind of like, hey, eh. hey, eh. <laughs> What do you say to Drake, you know? know. like What do you say? Nice, nice, I, think I, I like your shoes? I don't know. What do you say? I like your No, I chains? think I, I referenced Degrassi. I think I did say, like, nice. I was a huge fan of Degrassi. And I was okay. just like, oh, my God, stop. <laughs> Put the words back in your mouth. Like, it's Drake. Come on. <laughs> no, you know what commercial I love the best? The Crown Jewels? Which no, one? I like the Seresto one where the dog steals oh. a bra. <laughs> oh. 
boy, oh boy, did I love Soresto. Let me tell you, thank God for Soresto during COVID too, because that aired and All I had the time. residual. Oh, but now they have that brilliant actor who's very much a Christopher Guest actor. He was in Waiting for Guffman, and um, I forget. He's the spokesperson now. For Dang the resto? It. I haven't seen it. All right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Fair enough. I was like, no, but I love him. He's so great. He's so funny. Yeah. <laughs> it was really cool because we, at one point, so the the Super Bowl commercial got got bumped again, and they brought it back for the for the NCAA tournament a couple months later. And at one point, yeah. we had you in that commercial. We had Jimmy for so from from a comedy of horrors. We had you in in a commercial. Yes. We had Jimmy Bellinger in a commercial. We had Addie Wyrick in a commercial. All three like airing almost every commercial block. I was like, that's our movie right there. <laughs> like, ah, uh, I love that. Uh, it's so nice. I know. And honestly, thank God for commercials. You know, it's. I love actors are like, oh, what are commercials? I'm like, well, they're. Tw- 26 seconds seconds of like a sitcom it's like you yeah. know light and fun and um sometimes it's more enjoyable than the show that you're watching so it's it's great and now i love every celebrity wants to be in them too i'm looking at all of these celebrity spokespeople and i'm just like mm-hmm. yeah why see because they pay <laughs> and they pay well they pay and they're fun and yeah. there's great directors that shoot commercials oh yeah, too. yeah absolutely well fincher started directors. out Fincher started out with commercials. That was his thing. And then he went yeah. on to start directing movies. He's a little detail oriented though. I will say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't mind working with Mr. Fincher. Would me, not me mind. Not. I him. wouldn't mind either, but you get ready for a hundred takes. Yeah. I'm just saying, get ready. Who for cares? Takes. That's fine. Boom. You paying me? <laughs> I'll do it for Fincher. Let's do it. Fine. Let me, yeah. let me stretch exactly. it out here. All right, let's go. A hundred times. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, You'll like I'm emotionally good. prepare physically. <laughs> yes, I'm good. Let's do this. All right. So we mentioned comedy of horrors. What was yes. it like to work on such a ridiculously dumb movie? <laughs> I loved that. Oh, my God. You have no idea. Again, another role that like completely out of my comfort zone, you know, becoming this like psycho witch. It was great. I was also like down in the dumps at that point. I had literally gotten dumped. Um, and I, it was like so great to just jump in to something and go there and work with kids. You know me, I love working with kids. So for me, that was a shit ton of fun. Um, and just getting to do a horror comedic film. Like I, people love horror films. They do. People are obsessed with them. When we went to New Jersey Horror Con, the the love that people have for horror movies, I was like, I need to do more of these. I want to be in more of them. Um, like, I got to work on my scream. Like, I just, I, they're great. There's such a built-in fan base. But when you get to do something that is comedic and horror, like, it's the best of both worlds. So it was, it was great. And then watching it at that old showboat hotel, watching it in, like, the balcony area, it was just, like, it was a fascinating it's a crazy experience, but yeah, I loved it. And I get to become an actual witch. How many times can, right. you know, like in, in a gorgeous like a town, witch. like that was, yeah. Oh, it was great. It was great. The prosthetics, all of it. I was obsessed. Like if I could do that again, I'd be so excited to have well, like crazy makeup. So yeah. Hang tight. Yeah, but yeah, about horror about movies. Hang tight. We were talking about the fan base, and we were we were just down in uh, in Williamsburg this uh, two weekends ago. Uh, uh, Ken and I and and Dan DeLuca, and and that fan base they are they are rabid, and and there were so many people that no. walked up to our booth and they were like, "The Night Watchman, holy shit, I fucking love that movie," and like that yeah. is the best feeling, like like because you know, this little thing that we made that is just we know it, but people people know it, and and that group but of people, people know so it, yeah. Because people would reach out to me and they'd be like, Is the, are these the same guys that did The Night Watchmen? And I was like, yes, that's crazy. Like, so again, it, that like this world, this crazy business that we're in, we, you don't know who's watching. Like you do it and you hope, you're like, please, I hope people see this movie. And, um, and it could make somebody's night, you know, where they're having a crappy night and they had a bad date and they rent the movie on Amazon Prime and they're just like, laughing and it's taking them out of their mundane existence it's like oh my god that is why we're doing it that's exactly. that's the joy right there yeah and i gotta say you know comedy of horrors is great because when we were trying to figure out 
the story to tie the all the shorts together. And we were like, all right, well, it's a substitute teacher. The immediate thing out of both of me and DeLuca as we were coming up was like, uh, all right, Kathy Searle. We didn't we didn't think outside of that box at all. We were just like, it's good. I be love Kathy. you for saying so, that. I mean, as, as soon as we came up with the idea, substitute teacher, we were like, got it, Kathy Searle. Boom. So we immediately started writing. Okay. For you, you know, that was the thing. We were just going to write this for you. And you were great on set because you came up with some great improv stuff as well. But you essentially open the movie and you end the movie. Yeah. Like you bookend it. Yeah. And I mean, you have other stuff in between. Yeah. But it, it, you got to start strong. You got to finish strong. And, you know, you were the rocks, you know, the pillars for everything else to, to sit in, you know, because. Oh, you know, thank you. It was fantastic, and we we thank you for all your efforts in that because it was fantastic. Are you I, kidding me? Thank you for giving me a job. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Anytime. We're going to do it again. We're going to do it again. When I'm on set, it's like this feeling of, I have a job? Like, it really, I every time there is a sense of, like, gratitude and magic that, you know, I think if you lose that, that's when you know it's time to walk away from the, the business. Yeah. Where each time you walk on and you just go, like, I get, I get to tell a story. I get to be somebody else. I get to live in the circumstances of like, it's amazing. So thank you. You're welcome. The You're fact welcome. that I get paid for it is even better. Uh, right. So Dan, <laughs> we didn't get to favorite drink yet. Or right. Ooh. Go right so, ahead. you know, so, okay. we, we like, we like to ask everybody. So when you go out, when, you know, so it might be different. It's whether you make it at home or whether you go out and order, what is your favorite, what is your go-to? What is your favorite drink? Uh, mine is a Manhattan, Ken's is an apple teeny. Love it. So actually I, I was a bourbon girl, bourbon neat all the time. Loved okay. it. And then right before the pandemic, I was like, I think I need to give up drinking. And I did. But I've started drinking like a little bit again, and now I'm like into wine, okay. which I never was before. But I had a Malbec recently, and I was just like, well, this is lovely. Good. Yeah. Light and lovely. But yeah, I was a bourbon gal, and I loved it. What I didn't love is that it made me just balloon. I mean, I look back, even with Comedy of Horrors, too, like, you know, I definitely had had booze weight. And so I had done a pilot with... um. Oh, gosh, that's terrible. His name went right out of my brain. Wonderful actor from The Sopranos. Um, and I turned to the actress and I was like, why did no one tell me? Because I was so heavy on screen. And I was just like, oh, yeah, no, I can't drink the bourbon anymore because it's got a lot of calories. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, it does. And hence me drinking water more so now. And especially now, whenever I'm working on anything, I just don't drink just because it's like, I don't want to, although I do eat the, I worked on a project and I ate my way through the town. It was disgusting. <laughs> so where, where, where's your favorite place to go get a drink or food, uh, you know, since we're doing food. So, so I yeah. love the Crosby hotel. It's uh, down in Soho. Okay. It's a little overpriced. But it's fantastic. It's the cocktails were amazing there, um, and really yummy food. And it's like a great kind of fun place to just like celebrity watch a little bit too. Um, and then there's like a couple speakeasies in the city that I was a fan of, but they didn't make it during the pandemic, which was yeah. a bummer. Hmm. Um, but yeah, the the Crosby Hotel is really still one of my favorites. Okay. Just I've been, I've been to the to the Haynes Law Room down in Chelsea, which is one of the speakeasies, and it's that's fantastic. Just recently went there. I went yeah. there on a first date. Yes, nice. So it's lovely, cool, cool place, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, though, I didn't realize that there were two. So oh. where did I go? The other location. The other one. Oh. Good. Oh. So I was a wee bit late for that date. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Bummer. <laughs> Made but for a good story. Made for a good did. story. It did. Um, <laughs> but so it, that I, is a very cool book. You know, I, I, I'm I'm a, 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 a I don't, how do I say this? I don't want to come off as a stalker, but I follow you a lot on Instagram and, you know, social media. I don't want to be a, a stalker. I follow you. I hang out outside your door. Yes. <laughs> I'm actually outside your I'm door right now. You. <laughs> exactly. Um, <laughs> but I, in, I saw these really cool pictures of you. 
in a tropical place. Uh, what was going on? What was up? It so was amazing. I, it, was, it was amazing. It was amazing. So I was there for a job, to be clear, because a lot of people thought I was on vacation, which I love that they thought I was on vacation um, because I don't really do vacations. And to me, when you get to work out of town, that's your vacation. Like you take right. a day or two when you get to explore wherever you are. Um, and I was in Hawaii, which is the most beautiful, magical place, um, working on just one episode of a, a show that shoots there. Um, and it was incredible. I have a big fear of boats. I'm not going to lie. And I got on a boat. I snorkeled. I, you know, with these shows that you are fortunate enough to work on, you may have days off. And I had three days off in a row. So it was like, oh, taking notes and marking down where I needed to go. And it's funny, the cast was like, you've gone to more places than we did <laughs> shooting a whole season before. <laughs> um, and <laughs> it was great. I mean, I ate my way through. But then I also, again, snorkeled, did a helicopter ride with no that. doors. Yeah, amazing. Which was insane. It Man. was insane. But I really, I got to say, I liked myself in Hawaii. I was like, I like who I am here. Um, <laughs> There's yeah. something really beautiful about the culture there too. Like just the word mahalo and the the meaning of it and aloha and and the the community out there, they they really live by it. And I had such beautiful brief encounters with people, with stores and restaurants that I would go into because I was alone for a lot of it. Um and then sometimes I would be able to hang out with the cast, which was amazing. Um but just, you know, hearing about people's life stories and it was incredible it was and the food oh the food i mean i just want to go back and eat <laughs> <laughs> and of course and of course work yeah of but course boy, work. Oh boy, like the food the food was just so incredible i like lived next door to an amazing restaurant that you know they were like she's here again um, <laughs> lots of elastic waist dresses. <laughs> it was great. The cool thing is, although I think by the end, the, the costume designer was like, these pants are a little tight on you. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> well, the cool thing Sorry. is, the cool thing is, is that you said it. What we talked about earlier in the show, you, you just said it instead of just sitting around your hotel, you went out and experienced things and you lived your life. And yeah. now you have those things, those experiences in you that you can use and you can draw from moving forward, doing things, you know, doing yes. work. It's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And just even like befriending, there was an amazing young woman, Candace, who was my barista at the hotel and, you know, learning about her and it was her 30th birthday coming up. And I was like, I've got to get Candace something. And just, you know, when you're there and you're interacting with people, it's like, it's incredible. So I just, yeah, it was, I mean, the role I got to play was superior. Like it, everything about it was just, it was amazing. It's, it's, uh, I, what I talk about the actor win, you know, when you're just feeling a little down, you're like, ah, shoot, I really need a win. This was an, an epic win for me in so many ways, just to work with the cast that I did be treated the way I was. It was it was, I am very grateful, like the Mahalo, like it, heaven. Yeah. That's it was, awesome. That's How long was the was flight? Amazing. How long was that flight? Luckily, I had a, uh, a nonstop and it was 11 hours. Ooh, wow. It That's was like, long. Yeah. But it's, you know, they put you in business first class. Yeah, it's so, amazing. Yeah, you know, you're laying under you bed. You got nothing to Hey. Yeah, you're in a bed. Um, <laughs> again, like nothing. Anybody for the next, like, I would say a couple months. If I complain about anything, I'm just going to smack myself. Like, yes, exactly. don't forget where you were. You were working always, end in paradise. I always think about like of, of the actors who I think of like, wh whose career would I want? Like Daniel Day Kim. He was on Lost for yes. eight seasons in Hawaii, and then he went straight into Hawaii Five O for another six seasons. Like that dude That's won. Pretty good. Yeah, he, he won. Like it's right? and to be in Honolulu where they were filming that, and 
So a lot of the crew members from Lost were with this production and and Hawaii Five-0. And yeah, just to hear like the great stories and um, also the, the community out there, their crew is just incredible. Like it's and I think because these actors are coming together and you're working on location, there's also this just like built in family. And um, I will say this, I, I wasn't fortunate enough to work with number one on the call sheet, oh. but I will say she and I had a really beautiful connection via Instagram and um, it, she's, uh, she's amazing. The kindest, she sent me a gift. It, like it just, again, nice. what a, what a win, what an incredible experience. Like I, I can't, um, tell you how how grateful we're happy for <laughs> really you. We, we can't wait to watch what it is I, me too I, I, yeah I can't, yes we can't wait i can say it will be october 3rd that okay the episode will air. amazing okay. and then you know as, as we, get we get closer, get closer. yeah as we get closer yeah. we will promote the daylights out of it you know that so thank you but you know just met you know talking about working with number one on the call sheet how was your experience working on bill tillman with that number one. Let me tell you something. That guy was a jerk, that wasn't number he? One, <laughs> that number one was incredible. Now, you know what? You know what? I've actually been really lucky. I have yet to work with, like, a shitty number one. Have you? Um, no. Maybe. No, actually, no, no, I shouldn't no. say that. One. Once. But she was not in a good place in her life, but and she was very kind of cold towards me. Mm -hmm. That was many, many moons ago. But I really... I gotta tell you, it's I've been really lucky. Yeah, not me. I, I've worked with one, and I, I, to this day, I mean, I, I, that experience really? was awful. Yeah, they were Ugh. they were not a good person. So yeah, uh, you know, unfortunately, it's crappy when that happens. Yeah. I know it's it's such a shame. But you know what? I think we as actors learn from that and go. I don't yeah, ever want to be like be that. that person. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, they, so to work with you as my number one and I'm your number two, yeah. I think we both know like, you know, and we've and we've seen it's it's just always ego and crap like that. People are having a shitty day. They're off. They're like a little weird. So it's, you know, you just sort of go, OK, I'm not going to take it personally. Yeah. Um, But no, I, I think, I'm... you know, number one, two and three, four, five, they set the tone for the sure they do for the film or the TV show. And it's like. Everybody hopefully is grateful and having a good time and and treating the crew the way they deserve with yeah. the utmost respect because they're showing up two hours before and leaving two hours later. So that's true. You know, it's it it's a family. It's and so when you, you do get to work on the good ones, you're just like, oh, I get it, I get it. I don't want to leave. Do I have to leave? Is my episode right. done? I don't, I'm not leaving. <laughs> so anyway, I was talking to uh, Dan Searles recently. No relation. How's he doing? Yes. I know. He's doing good. Uh, he's Although maybe I'll find out in 23 and Me. I don't know. He, he's right. There yes, you go. Exactly. So he's trying to uh, get this uh, Bill Tillman 2 up and running. Is he really? Uh-huh. Yeah. So I we love might it. be... Uh, Is it a movie or a limited series on Amazon Prime? Probably both. They'll make <laughs> a movie first and then break it into a series. So I love that. Yeah. I mean, that's that's great. Listen, so. who cares how they watch it? Watch it full, watch it as a, you know, short films, short form series, like just watch it. <laughs> exactly. So he, he actually sent me a text while I was on vacation and he's, he wanted to talk when I got back. So I got to reach out to him and uh, figure out yeah. what he wants to do here with this. Um, because I, think I would love it. You know, that's a character I'd like to revisit. You know, well, you ever watch yourself in a movie and go, yeah. dang it. Yeah. I miss the mark a little bit. And it wasn't the director's fault or the writer's. I, I just, I watched it and I went, ah, damn. I, there were a couple things that I was like, oh, I should have been in that. Like, you kind of forget your trajectory and so you watch it back and you're just like, oh, man, I wish I could do a redo. Well, guess what? You might get the chance. And uh, I already read the script, so you would be doing some pretty cool stuff. I love yeah. it. So a lot of it. action. It's a, it's uh, a lot Dan, of action. Dan, I'm available. Yeah. Dan Searles, I'm available. A lot of action in it. Um, yeah, you know, certain things have to happen for for me to jump on board, and and yeah, you know, there are some changes I think from the first group. I Man, don't get me wrong, I, I had a great yeah. time with that group, but I, th yeah. I think you know 
there needs to be a couple changes. And if those things happen, man, I am in and I'm ready to go. So yeah, yeah. it'd be great oh, to God, get back on great. screen with you. We tried oh, recently. Yeah. No, we tried I to know. get you on something recently, but yeah. I know. And I'm so it's sad. It's <laughs> you have no idea. I was so sad the night that like I was emailing with producer and writer. Um, I was in tears because I was like, how can I make this work? How can we make this work? Like, because I come from that school of thought of like, I have to be able to make this work. <laughs> Both projects can work. You want to do all the things. Yeah, you got to go to Hawaii, I though. I didn't get yeah. to go to Hawaii, but you did. I know, but amazing. I would have gotten to work with you again. And that's also something that's, you know, really important. When you get to continuously work with the same people, you know, look at the best of the best. It's like Christopher Guest is still my hero. And I look at all of those actors that he yeah. worked with. And, you know, it's that repetitive group that then, you know, they're, they make each other look better because they're, they're, incredibly talented so that's why i was hoping that you and i could work together again well hang tight because there's a lot of good things happening and there's yeah. a lot of talk of doing a lot more movies together so yeah good so hang good, tight good. hang tight because things are coming down the pipe and when we are able to share all that information with everybody i think we'll all be working and we'll all be working a lot which would be fantastic amen knock wood so, yeah it'll be great but uh, Dan, we've yeah. been on for an hour and twelve minutes, my friend. That's we have really. Oh my yes. god! Before before we jump, Kathy, where can people find you on mm -hmm. the, the socials? On the socials, it's just at Kathy Searle. It's just my name, um, and yeah. Hopefully, I'll be posting more things about work and and hopefully more work to come. Um, but yeah, hopefully, you know, I'll, I'll make you giggle when you check out my social media. But yeah, on the gram, I'm always on the gram. And definitely, definitely check out if you're not. So I'm not a person who usually watches stories, but if you see Kathy pop up in that circle at the top of your page, go ahead and click it because it's usually worth checking out. It is. It Thank absolutely you. is. So. Thank and you. You make me laugh a, at least once a day, Kathy, which is fantastic. Oh, I love you. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Yes, and thank you so much for coming on and joining us today, drinking thank you your, for your uh, water. Crystal <laughs> <Drinking Kaiser. laughs> While Water's me and Dan are fun. liquored up, we're like, but yeah, well, it's, getting, it's getting a little <laughs> late. I don't Gotta yeah, but you bed. should be. It's what time is it? This is like eight nineteen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on. Yeah, hey, drinks. And I, I don't have to be at the boat tomorrow until one o'clock anyway, so I'm good. Oh, then yes, you're fine. You also had a long day, so you're allowed. Come uh, on. I know. I was redoing my walkway today. What, what kind of ridiculousness I is know. that? So had that go. My insurance. It was. It was fantastic. My insurance company. Uh, make this really quick sh sh story. So we went with a new insurance company for home insurance. You know, for uh, homeowners. Yeah. Well, they came by and they took pictures of all the things I needed to fix on my house. There was a branch over my shed, so I had to remove it. So I had to climb up on my shed this weekend. I'm up there with this big, long pole saw cutting this branch down, right? And then there was a little moss on the roof, so I had to get the moss off because they were like, that'll cause damage. You got to get the moss off. So I'm up there scrubbing moss off the top of my shed, right? I'm like, oh, gosh. Right? And, and they charged us yeah. ex extra money. And then if they said, if you do clean, take care of it and yeah, send us pictures, yeah. we'll take that money off. You know, we'll just discount you. And the walkway in my oh, front okay. yard and the walkway in my front yard, I had a tree during the winter that too much snow and it knocked the tree over and it ripped up my walkway. And I had made it um, nice and you could still walk on it, but they wanted the walkway built back brick by brick. And so I went in this oh, weekend no. and, and did that. And now we just gotta, a little masonry work on a yeah. Sunday. Great. And now I got to send pictures <laughs> in and say, here it is. It's all fixed and repaired. So, but I got it done. Yeah. Great yeah. book. A great book. My wife just picked up. And if you guys, and I don't remember the author's name, but it's called bird by bird. All right. Bird by and, bird. Okay. Yes, it's called bird by bird. And I'll give you a quick synopsis and then we'll, we'll say goodbye and we'll let you get on with your life. But bird by bird, the guy, when he was a kid, he went to an island every summer, and his homework for the summer was to write about all the birds he saw, and he had to write a paragraph about each bird. Oh, I love and that. he felt overwhelmed. He was like, but there are so many birds here, Dad. What do I do? And his dad goes, do it bird by bird. Start with the first one. 
go to the second I love one, that. and then boom. And before you knew it, he had a book of over 200 birds that he wrote. Oh, I love that. Right? So it's bird by bird. And that's the jobs around and the house. And that's a life lesson yeah. right there, exactly. isn't it? And I was just like, Take you know what? Take it hour by hour, bird by bird. Bird by bird. <laughs> And then every time my wife says something to me, so you're going to do this today or you do this? And I just look at her and I go, bird by bird, I'm going to go do it. Yeah. And I just go out and yeah. I just work on it. And then I do the next thing and do the next thing. And then all of a sudden you feel like you did something. So. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. love that. I love that we're ending on that note. Let's do everything bird by bird. Right. Because that's. Great advice. It, it's, it's pretty much sometimes our world, in our world, in everybody's world, I don't care what you do. It, sometimes it feels overwhelming. Yeah. It really does. And, yes. you know, you feel like you're never going to get it done. Or, you know, if you're making a film and you got to produce it and you got to get all, everything done, and you got to line everything up. But you know what? You break it down and you do one thing at a time and you just bird by bird it. Get, you know. Yeah. And you'll get done. And then you'll get it done. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love that. So it was a cool I'm book. I'm going to get that book. Yeah, Bird by Yeah. So. <laughs> I love it. But anyway, Kathy, thank you so much for coming on. We love you so much. And thank I mean, you guys. we're going to be doing so we're going to be doing so much together over the next Yay. 10, 15, 20 years. <laughs> we're going to we'll be yes, all, we'll please. all be sitting 90 years old. We'll, we'll be sitting in the assisted living oh, facility. Great. All right, you want to make a movie? Let's do it. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's do it. Yeah. Wait a minute. Built-in location. I got to get my fruit cup first. Let me get my fruit cup and then we'll go. Hold on. <laughs> Put in my teeth. Put my yeah. teeth. <laughs> Great. <laughs> but thank you, Kathy. I appreciate it. And thank you remember, guys, guys so much. you can see her on Bridge and Tunnel right now. You can also see her in Where's Rose in theaters in Atlanta, L.A. and New York, did you say? Or North Carolina. North Carolina. Yes, North Carolina. Yeah. Hopefully it will be in New York. August 19th for uh, Love and Coneary. Right. Exactly. Yeah. New York. Yeah. Yeah. And then no vacancy as well. If you get a chance to see that, I think it's streaming now. So no vacancy. Yes, it is. Yeah. It's, it's on, on demand. Yeah. And of course, a comedy of horrors volume one, which you can buy on Blu-ray. And I just got two orders of <laughs> Blu-rays and DVDs in, which is amazing. <laughs> and we're going to be, I at, love it. we're going to be at the Maryland pop horror convention at BWI airport at the end of August. And we'll have those Blu-rays and DVDs there. And uh, if you'd like to stop Love by, it. do so. And uh, we will uh, we'll have them. So it'll be and we'll be back in Jersey in September, right? Yeah. So, Kathy, you want to join us in Jersey again down in Atlantic City? Let us I know. I do. Yeah. Get down to AC. Yes, please. <laughs> so we will be in AC September 17th and eight, 16th, 17th, and 18th. We'll be at, at the same spot, Showboat. So Nice. Yeah. Yeah, and we'll. Yay. But the good thing is, we'll have the Blu-rays and DVDs this time. We didn't have them last time, and yeah, at Scares That Care in Virginia, the one we went to two weeks ago, Dan and I, they were just selling like hot. You know, that's where we made our money, right? The Blu-rays. Yeah. And now that we have yeah. the Blu-rays for a comedy of horrors, I think it's gonna it's gonna really help. So it's gonna be good. Yeah. So. Oh, that's great. amazing! Yay. <laughs> It'll be great. And guess who's right on the front of every Blu-ray and every DVD? This spice. Exactly. This spice right here. <laughs> helping us sell our wares, Kathy Searles. You're helping us sell our wares. We're all going to be I'm billionaires. Trying. We're all going to be billionaires living on <laughs> yachts. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hair flip flip. Yes, please. <laughs> all right. Well, guys, Dan, we got to wrap this up. So We got to wrap this up. This might be a two-parter. I don't know. Uh, no, maybe it's an hour and 20 minutes. So yeah, we could break it up into, yeah. Our, our first two-parter. I know, but I love two-parters. Oh, yeah. to be continued, dot, dot, dot. Dot, dot, dot. I think we should. <laughs> I think we should do a two-part thing. Well, anyway, thank you. Uh, stick around for a second, Kathy, after we uh, stop the yeah. recording here. But uh, Don't we have to go to a, uh, to a theme song or something like Absolutely. that? Absolutely. We've got to go, and we've got to have Kathy throw us to it. Dan, if you would like to instruct Kathy on how to do such things. So oh, Jeremy okay. Ragsdale, oh. who, uh, who is our – he wrote the, the Apple Teenies theme song. He's, he's the, uh, yes. the X Factor Romania champion from some year, and uh, he's, he's Ken's son's uh, vocal coach. Uh, he wrote us the uh, song, so all you have to do is kick it to him. You can count down, you can throw it however you want. What's his name? <laughs> Jeremy. Jeremy Ragsdale is, what is his it? name. Jeremy, Jeremy? Ra Ragsdale. Okay. 
Jeremy, hit me with those tunes. A little Apple Teeny tunes. <laughs> Apple Teenies with Ken. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah. Apple Teenies with Ken. Ah, oh, 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 oh. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Apple Teenies with Ken. Apple Teenies with Ken. Oh, yeah.